Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your May 2024 forecast. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. We're going to be taking a look at all of the energy coming through for this next six to eight week period, and you can always apply this to Sun, Rising Moon, or Venus. Let's get straight into your channeled messages for today. The first thing that came through in dreams this morning was a nudge from spirit to basically do your homework, do your research, vet any sort of sources or assumptions so that you know that you're actually dealing with uh, the real deal. I think this is especially true when it comes to um, gossip, word of mouth, hearsay, anything that really doesn't have concrete information behind it. Anybody can basically state something and unless there's something backing it up, it's just an opinion. So I really want you to make sure that you get a couple points of view and see if you can't back it up by, again, facts, figures, or data. One of the reasons this is really important is it could save face. Basically, it could save you from um, putting yourself out there and then people basically do that research and say, hey, by the way, we checked up on that and that wasn't the case. So if you're going to be vocal about something, if you're gonna make a decision about something really important, make sure that you have all of that extra information so that you have that sense of confidence. The other thing here is, you know, I have this image of deep waters. Sometimes people don't want you to dig deeply, um, don't want you to uncover something. And this is often the case in a sort of contractual thing where maybe they can get you to agree to give more than you should. This could also be if you're buying a big ticket item like a house or a car, especially if it's a used car, uh, you really want to make sure that all the inspections have been done, that you have proper insurance, uh, that everything has been researched. That is going to help you find a potential problem before it exists. And uh, in the case of a, any sort of purchase like a house, make sure that you're getting homeowner's insurance. That way, if something pops up, you're going to be covered. So look at the fine print, get a second set of eyes or ears on anything to make sure that you're hearing and seeing it correctly. And I think if you do that, whatever needs to be revealed will be revealed. Uh, and again, at the end of the day, it's all in the numbers, it's all in the, the details, so that's why I also put the Eight of Pentacles here. There might be someone that wants you to miss something, but you're gonna see it because you're curious, because you have a, an expert set of eyes or ears looking at it, and in the long run, you'll be so happy that you checked. The next thing that I saw in dreams was a spotlight shining in your direction. This is a chance for you to rise up, for you to show your potential, for you to shine. Remember what I just said, you've been doing all of this homework and research and preparation work to really get you in that position uh, to make the most out of the spotlight. Therefore, Spirit really wants me to convey this. There is a difference between being put in the spotlight and being put on the spot. You're being put into that spotlight so you can shine. Don't get in your headspace. Um, what can sometimes happen is the inner saboteur comes through and it basically is saying you're not ready or people are looking at you or they're laughing at you. Or they're, they're not going to receive what you say with open arms. Get that out of your head. Instead, think I'm ready. Uh, I have value and I bring value to this conversation and just speak with that sense of calm and don't edit too much there. OK, so I feel like that's the main thing here is to embrace spotlight moments when they come through and don't let the noise in your head stop you from being your best, basically being the best version of yourself, okay? Now let's look at some of the other nuances to this. Someone may need your advice, and again, this is a chance for you not only to show what you have to offer, but also help a friend or help a colleague in need. You may also be able to turn the spotlight yourself on areas that need attention, um, maybe areas where recognition is overdue, um, if you're in a position of leadership or power, you can be the one that is basically wielding the spotlight and shining it where it uh, really needs to be seen and heard. This is also tantamount or comparable to the star. So the ultimate energy of this spotlight is reminding you to rise up, lead the way, and keep shining no matter what. Finally, this happened after I woke up and was meditating, but spirit whispered to me, change your focus or change your line of thinking. And one of the best cards to illustrate that is five of cups, because typically this card comes on the heels of two things, sometimes a disappointment, but also usually an opportunity. And you're caught in the middle somewhere. You're still mourning because we can see that there is a sense of mourning. Uh, mourning or feeling frustrated over what did not come to pass. 
Meanwhile, spirit's saying, it's okay. I have something bigger, better, brighter, more um, in alignment with who you are. That's where that spotlight is, okay? So embrace possibilities. Release any of these feelings that you didn't do all that you could have. And even if you, if you wish you could have changed something, you've learned from that and you can basically adapt that and project that into the future. So new partnerships are possibly coming into the horizon, new opportunities. It's a chance to heal and it's also a chance for you to prove to yourself and to others that um, you're capable of growth and movement and you're ready to receive whatever that two of cups in the background uh, is in your future. New love, new partnership or something that you love. And that's really the reward for getting through the three cups that have spilled over here. Okay, so again, Lean into details this month. Dig deeper if you have questions or if you feel like there's something that hasn't been talked about. Embrace the spotlight. Also use your own sort of ability to shine a spotlight on others in a positive way and focus on the potential. To that end, let's go ahead now and give the cards a shuffle and see what Spirit has to say about the month ahead. Great to see everyone, by the way. Already off to a great start with the Six of Cups. And the lovers. I've been noticing across signs um, opportunities when it comes to partnerships, love, friendship, business alliances, and there's no difference here for you either, especially with the Six of Cups and Agape, which is love in its highest forms, and the, uh, and, and the lovers as well. Before I get too deep into all of that, though, let me finish shuffling all the cards here. Okay, as always, let's begin with your catalyst card. You received the unicorn and the catalyst itself is really trying to help you get on the right track. So this unicorn is saying, be yourself, don't hold back. Very closely connected to the star energy which I featured in the channeled messages. The unicorn represents magic and belief. Some of you may be really focusing on reconnecting with believing in yourself, um, finding something in your life that feels magical or bright or kind of makes you excited about getting up. This is your vitality, this is your dream, this is your true self. Don't deny yourself something that makes you feel that sense of joy and wonderment and magic. This is a chance to rekindle it. And yes, the spotlight is being shined on you, so allow yourself to be seen as you truly are. Unique, powerful, magical, okay? Maybe some of you just needed to hear from me that you do have that potential and you have that power. It does require belief though. So this month, maybe one of the opportunities for you is to find something, someone to believe in. Uh, you should start with yourself, but then it could also be a dream or a goal on top of that. You don't have to walk this path alone. At the center of this spread, we have the Six of Cups. This is a card of partnership, of new friendship, um, even something hearkening back to youth because this can represent nostalgia, the past, friends from the past. When it comes, however, to the fact that you got the lover's card, new love, what we have here is karmic energy or a deep friendship. So this is like friends and lovers. It's a really optimal union this month. So if you've been in a period where things just haven't been going in the right direction or you felt like there's a desert and there hasn't been a lot of people coming in, I see a shift this month, Scorpio. There are new friendships, there are new opportunities. It's really about opening yourself up to that and presenting yourself as this. Someone out there is looking for their unicorn. These two cards remind me a little bit of Practical Magic, a great movie from the late 90s and um, main character Sandra Bullock. She falls in love with someone that she doesn't expect to fall in love with because she put together this really 
kind of almost impossible list of attributes. She had high expectations. Lo and behold, her unicorn comes in and uh, they fall in love. And there is this moment where she's afraid that just because she wished in the form of a spell for him that he didn't truly fall in love with her. And he says to her, I wish for you too. So there's a chance for you to come in alignment with, basically we're talking about a synchronicity, with someone that's been looking for you. It could be an employer that's been really trying to find the right match. It could be someone that's trying to find a good person to, to buy their house or apartment or whatever, or it could be love interest. And both of you have been manifesting and focusing and clarifying, and the, it's worth the wait. That's, that's the thing that I'm getting for this. So for those that have been waiting, I don't think the wait's going to be much longer, and it's been worth it. Uh, overall, though, the Six of Cups is just a really beautiful magnetic card. And if you can be playful, joyful, and show people that sort of charm and charisma, that too will bring things into your life. Things that basically constitute wish fulfillment. So what a powerful beginning card. Before we get too deep into the spread, I always like to take a quick pulse on it. And, you know, good news here. We really don't have a lot of difficult cards. The only one that I see here is Nine of Swords and it's reversed. So managing some stress, managing some patience with temperance reversed, um, and practicing good self-love. I think those are maybe the only challenges here. But let's just take it a card at a time. It's going to be a good month. I can give you a preview on that. Um, so let's start off with, with the uh, crossing card here, and it's the Nine of Wands. You've been through it. This is something that has come through in no less than like three signs, and it's usually towards the beginning. I don't know what's been going on for many of you in the first part of this year, but I can tell that it's been significant. For some of you, it's worn you out. And it may just be like emotional fatigue, but for some of you, it could also be physical. The Nine of Wands accurately shows in this deck what happens sometimes. Um, things can ricochet in your headspace a little bit. You might be replaying the past thinking, if I had only done that. Um, some of you are trying to fast forward to the future thinking, are we there yet? The Nine of Wands invariably is saying, first and foremost, you're a survivor. Secondly, job well done on what you've done. And third, don't give up. You're very close to accomplishing whatever it is that you want or manifesting something that basically is going to fulfill your heart's desires. So this is a time to basically keep to the path, focus on the future as we were talking about, and um, give yourself a little bit of self-care if you need it. <laughs> this person looks, like I said, a little worse for the wear, but this is like a cat with nine lives and you are not even close to that ninth life yet. So keep pushing, keep believing in yourself, give yourself a little bit of self-care. Maybe that comes in the form of a much needed vacation. Maybe it's a massage. Maybe it's spending time with the people that you love in your life. Whatever it is, you can do it, and you'll do it even better because of this love and support. All right, deep past, karmic lessons. Uh, for many of you, it's to keep an open mind. The Knight of Wands is one of the best cards for taking some sort of a, like a zygote or beginning of an idea and bringing it to the finish line. There's a closed-mindedness or stubbornness when the card is reversed. And sometimes this has to do in when something should happen, how it should happen, and sort of like the path in front of you. This is inviting you to explore all the twists and turns available, and there might be a better way. It's also saying it's okay to change your mind, especially when we're looking at an idea-based card like this in reverse. Knights, when, when in the upright position, it's basically saying, keep it up, keep going, movement is in front of you. In reverse, you get to basically say, I've gotten to this point, do I like it? Also, have I explored all options? And if I feel like I need to make a change, what's holding me back from making that change? Ask yourself these questions. Decide if you wanna continue on the path in front of you. If you don't, as we talked about in channeled messages, just do the homework and research, talk to other people, talk to friends. Um, this is not so much a counselor card as it is like getting some advice from brother, sister, best friend, colleague, etc., neighbor, people that you know, people that you love, people that you trust, okay? Now let's take a look at what's going on here in the recent past. Um, I always like to see the lover's card in any position, in any part of the spread here, but it's upright, it's in the recent past, and it's saying that this is your time. This is also connected to that spotlight energy. And, it, and I said I didn't feel any sort of nefarious or tricky pieces to that. 
I don't feel like it's about putting you on the spot. I feel like someone is seeing you too. So that spotlight might have also been their gaze, their ability to uh, recognize you. So the lovers, upright position, recent past. As the month kicks off, people are paying more attention to you. You are more persuasive than you may have normally been in the past. You may have better luck when it comes to forging new friendships or love. And if you're looking for love, yes, this is a good month, folks, with Six of Cups, the Lovers, and Agape. I'll talk more about Agape when we get to that in a moment. But basically, we can read this as love and abundance in all the highest forms. And that's what the universe wants to serve up this month. And I think one of the main things for you is simply to put out there that you're ready to receive. Let's move along to your crowning card. We have a card here that represents uh, paternal energy, developmental energy, abundance, money, and basically it's one of the best power cards as well. We have the King of Pentacles. When it comes to business, finance, and money, this is the one that you want. If there's anything that you want to see grow or change or move, the King of Pentacles also has the magic touch. Um, basically, it's almost like anything, like the green thumb, if you're a gardener, you can basically make it grow. So I really want you to focus not so much on any setbacks, more on lessons learned, newfound passions, or reconnecting to, again, the part of you that believes in yourself and in the possibilities, and then the King of Pentacles energy starts to take shape and form. This is a month during which you definitely want to speak up. Speak up about any questions that you have regarding your financial matters. Um, if you want to step into a more entrepreneurial energy, the King of Pentacles is definitely something that um, says you've got what it takes to do this. It also just represents a changing or turning point for you where things are starting to come forward. This is another card that is aligned with that spotlight. Let's take a look now at near future here. So one other thing I want to talk about with the King of Pentacles is we were talking about facts and figures and reading the small print, all of that. This is setting you up for success, and this is a great card also for management. So we have business and money, now we have management and boss energy coming through here in the Queen of Wands, and also innovative energy. So some of you may also be in a really great business partnership. I talked about how both the uh, Six of Cups and the Lovers card, they don't have to just be romance. This could be business colleagues, schoolmates, so maybe you're on a great project at school or something, but what I see here is practicality and innovation. And those two cards together are, are really quite magical when it comes to business, right? So there's that. <laughs> this is also reminding you that you can manage anything that comes your way. In the traditional card, we see her in a desert. She still has the sunflower, but you can see even a little bit more clearly in the desert that it's sort of magical that she can make this happen. So even if you don't have everything that you need, um, you might be working with limited resources, limited imagination with people around you. You're that illumination. Uh, so I really want you to trust in your insights, in your imagination. And like I said way back at the beginning, you could be the one shining a spotlight and saying, we need to focus on this or look at this. Um, and when you communicate, you really want to do so with this sense of hopefully you know, confidence, maybe it's newfound confidence, but really belief, passion, and that confidence together are going to make for a perfect package. And people are going to say, let's do this because uh, the next card here representing you is agape. Um, so you don't have to push it. That's the lesson here that we're also seeing with the nine of wands. People are either in or they're not, but the people that are in are fully in and ready to support you. This is one of the best cards that I could pull for you, representing the soul, representing self. Agape is one of the highest forms of love, and we can see the unconditional love and support coming through, so much so that this card doesn't have a reversal. It reads agape in either position. This is a moment in time where the universe kind of wants you to take a little bit of stock in your friendships and activities and engagements and think to yourself, you know, do these people see me in that sort of unconditional energy? Do they love me no matter what? Come thick or thin, um, rich or poor, whatever's going on. Do I feel that sense of community and connection? If you're not feeling community connection and unconditional support, it may be time to veer in another direction to basically release certain people or connections so that you're making room for more of this. I say that because, like I said earlier, this is not the month to settle for less. 
we actually see two of the best cards for love and relationships, the lovers and the six of cups. And this one is saying you're worth it. And I think that's the big realization here is if someone doesn't see your worth and isn't interested, that's the universe continuing to kind of help you redirect and get on that path. So I just would like to repeat, you are worth it. You're worth receiving love and abundance in the highest forms, but really take some time to unconditionally love yourself. Give yourself a hug. This body, this mind, this spirit has brought you this far. Whatever flaws you think you have, whatever, whatever you want to change about yourself, your higher self doesn't look at you like that. The angels don't look at you like that. And this is just a body. So this is really a chance for you to just see how uh, magical you are, how capable you are, and to love yourself enough to choose people and opportunities that value you, not um, opportunities that ask you to change so that you can fit their mold. It's part of the reason I had to stop working in corporate culture because it is all about aligning to their quarterly goals. And you're, you realize at a certain point, you're constantly trying to do something for someone else and fit their expectations. Very rarely do they check in to see if they're fitting your expectations. It's not so much a two-way ship in many companies, not all. Um, if you're in that kind of unicorn of a company where they care about personal growth and development, stick with it. You got something good. And if you're not feeling it, look around. This is a time where, especially with the King of Pentacles, you might be able to open up new business opportunities. We'll, we'll dig deeper into that when we go into finances and career in a few moments there. But I can say that already, that I'm seeing some good energy there. Also, when it comes to, for some of you, maybe launching your own business or becoming an entrepreneur, um, these three cards together are amazing. Love what you're doing. Love who you are. Um, bring similar minded people with you and then lead the charge. OK, patience, my friend, that is probably it's not the most difficult, but it might be the most persistent thing that comes through this month. So we have temperance in reverse. Temperance is a big, beautiful iridescent in this deck angel and it's basically saying it's all aligning don't rush trust in the process folks um, and if something is too difficult and you feel like you're forcing it it's not worth it this includes love and friendships if you're constantly trying to get them to pay attention or answer an email or even just you know sort of like respond it's there's something better out there right there may also be situations where you're trying to force agreement and that's not good either. Patience is good and let people show their true colors and allow other people that might be better aligned to come through. Um, temperance overall is also a reminder to take care of your mental health and your emotional well-being. We can see those two cups that she holds representing balancing out all of the energies and elements. This is a really important month for work-life balance or just balance in general of things that you care about. Uh, so this angel is trying to help you with that as well. Obviously, it's saying don't go to extremes. And when the card is reversed, it's antithetical to that temperance message. So you may feel like you want to, you know, get in a fight or an argument. You may feel like, you know, you have to push something to happen. Take a deep breath. Give it a half step and do a little bit of research. Sleep on it. Uh, really don't don't rush the process. Trust the process instead. Okay. Let's look at the second big challenging card here. And it's for some of you just stress management here. OK, so nine of swords, it is reversed. So we can assume that for many of you, it's starting to improve. What happens with nine of swords energy? Sometimes we're working ourselves to exhaustion. And because we're not in that sort of rested state, we, we pay attention to fears and anxieties. Sometimes we let those fears and anxieties projected upon us by friends and family get into our headspace and sometimes we just freak out about stuff that isn't happening um, what if this happens what if that happens take it a step at a time and let tomorrow show you exactly what's possible remember back at the beginning one of i think one of the great ways to um, basically overcome fear is information so i had a different fear-based card here the moon sometimes it's about things that might be sneaking by but i gave you the key to overcoming that and that is data and information here in the form of the eight of pentacles we can see that person doing the research so whenever fear comes through in whatever form it might appear um, it's basically about educating yourself getting some knowledge and a lot of times that will completely get rid of the nine of swords sleep quality and quantity both matter 
your body is going to require something different than someone else's. Uh, so make sure that you're getting enough and make sure that what you're getting feels like it's giving you that sense of being rested. And if it isn't, this is something where it could be, it's probably a combination of the two, but it could be either environmental or psychological or, or something even else that's going on. And you got to kind of look in all facets of your life, stress reduction, um, relationship stress as well, management, and then just sort of like letting go of the unknown, needing to kind of control everything, comfort with ambiguity, all of those things will help you overcome that card. Okay. Now let's take a look at your outcome. It's a good card, but when it's reversed, it can sometimes indicate a lack of vitality, feeling tired, um, overthinking or questioning. Can I do this? So the Ace of Wands is like spirit coming through and giving you a, um, a baton. In this case, even like something that's already starting to grow, an idea that could bear fruit. But Aces are potential and spirit wants to know, are you ready to take on this idea? We know you are. I mean, at least intellectually speaking with the Queen of Wands. But for the reasons I just mentioned with the Nine of Swords, you may be a little bit tired emotionally or energetically. So take care of yourself. Also, if you don't feel the spark, this is so important in love, in jobs, and in anything that matters. You can't fake it. Um, Ace of Wands in reverse is basically something looking good on paper, but just not feeling right. Please trust your intuition. As I said earlier, it's worth the wait for that moment when the Ace of Wands is in the upright position, okay? Reverse, it's like a light bulb that's just turned off and nothing's going to make it turn on until you feel like this is it. All right, let's go ahead and expand this forecast. We're going to take a deeper dive into health, wealth, love, and destiny. We'll get started with health, which is your mind, body, and spirit. Let's take a look and see what the health card is. It came through reversed, but it reads discontent and boredom. So the universe is basically reiterating what I just said. You can't fake it. If you're not feeling that sense of connection and basically inspiration, it's time to walk away from something. It's time to really chase after your dream, your desire, not even chase after, just embrace your dreams, your desires, the things that bring the opposite of this, that keep your interest, that inspire you. And um, when you do that, you might see something waiting for you, something bigger and better and brighter. It reminds me kind of like a, of a combination of like the four of cups and the four of pentacles. You might be holding on to something that doesn't provide um, that sense of connection. Um, and that makes you bored. And you may also be missing something like in the Four of Cups, that ace that's floating in the air. So I'd love you to just look and see what else is out there. It's a chance to explore options in all aspects of your life, including health. Okay. And being happy makes you healthier. And I think that's why this card appeared there. Looking at the general spread here, we already talked at great length about Nine of Swords. It's stress management and it's sleep quality and quantity. So you can heed the sort of advice that I just gave a few moments ago. Let's instead now focus a little bit here on temperance. Um, patience. Some of you may be, your, your patience may be tried by an individual in your life. It may be tried by how long it's taking to finish something. Um, so this is like a good life skill that you can work on a little bit. This is also a card of balance. And some of you may be having trouble creating the necessary balance in your life between work, your personal life, possibly even other things that matter to you. So it's, fun, it's striking that perfect balance. And there could also even be like inner ear balance issues too. Obviously for all things in the area of health, you're going to be working with your doctor, but just highlighting energetically what's coming through. If you're starting something new, don't overdo it. Um, sometimes the nine of wands this is so true for those of you that might just have gotten a new gym membership or hired a trainer or you're starting to work out with a friend. Sometimes these other people don't know your body as well as you do and they might push you. This is a pushy card sometimes and we don't want that to happen. And sometimes we're afraid of hurting their feelings or something and you don't speak up. So definitely push back if you, if you don't feel that your body can go, you know, that extra mile or, you know, you, you want to take care of yourself. Because both with the seven and the nine of wands, when we're looking at increases in physical activity, uh, it can cause like stretched muscles, slip discs, uh, sprains. Usually it's nothing, you know, over the top, but who wants any of those things, right? Take care of yourself. Also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, stress headaches could be coming through. Migraines, 
TMJ, uh, upper neck or back issues. And so you want to take care of the top part of your head as well. We're also looking at something unusual here, which is like brain health. I talked a little bit about that in the last sign. So make sure that your diet is good, that you're staying stimulated intellectually. It's really important for those of you as you get into, um, you know, the, the latter part of your life that you still do things that, you know, keep you inspired and keep you intrigued because the brain needs to be exercised. So uh, this also, by the way, includes things like puzzles, playing games, playing sports, having fun. So have some fun, folks, in all of those ways and anything else that you want to do. Relationships are really important this month for health, for happiness. And so we're, we're looking at balance in your life. So for some of you, if you have children, you might want to spend more time with them. If you're looking for love, you might, might want to spend more time there. You may just like spending time with other people that you care about, even just immediate family. Yes, all of that. More time with people this month in whatever way feels right to you. Okay. And, uh, and again, this is a vitality thing. So if you're feeling that sense of, I don't want to get up today, um, not this again, it has sometimes a lot less to do with your body and more to do with like what you're putting your time and energy behind. And so we've come full circle with that message. Let's move on to, um, wealth. Now this is going to be resources, life, purpose, and career. And Oh, we had a hidden card here. So I didn't see that there were two. There was the great teacher and beneath it is the sun. So great teacher. Some of you may be seeking out a brand new uh, sort of mentor or a guide to help you out. Again, I mentioned earlier, if we look at the arrangement of cards here, sometimes this can just be a, a close friend that has really good insights on something. And it feels like the answer is close to you. So I like that. Um, underneath this card, we have the sun. And it says, enjoy success and happiness. Yes, this is your moment to shine. Some of you may actually be finding someone that opens up a door or helps you kind of connect to that power. And with the king of pentacles in the crowning position, this is a very, very good month for wealth. That was the only money card we got. And second only to the wheel of fortune. It's one of the highest ones that I could pull. So I feel like it's a time for you to turn around, right? So maybe it's eclipsed you before, but now it's starting to come through and you might be seeking out advice when it comes to a business mentor or a new financial advisor, a tax advisor, a bookkeeper. Someone's going to help you turn this around. OK, and it's also just you realizing in, in your own sort of like power and potential entrepreneurial energy for sure with this. This is also a launching card. Um, the sun card in tarot when reverse is saying something is overdue. Let's now take a closer look at all of the cards and break it down into three major categories, beginning with those that already have a job, then we'll go to job seekers, and then those that are retired or students, beginning with those that are currently employed. Um, you're working hard. This is first and foremost, the nine of wands. For some of you, you're working hard and you're managing a lot of stress and you feel like you're lost in the shuffle. So please take care of yourself. Find that perfect balance in your life and prioritize time with friends and family and fun as well. Some of you are not feeling connected. So some of you may be busy and just stressed. Some of you may be busy and bored um, and just feeling like I can't do this anymore. The good news for you is it does feel like opportunities are opening up, including those of you that kind of want to create your own business. So I get a big vote from spirit that says yes to entrepreneurial work. Um, let's just assume that you want to stay in a job and manage some of the challenges because not everyone wants to find a brand new job. And I understand that. Here's where the opportunities are for you. Um, first of all, the biggest strength you have going for you, that spotlight energy comes through in the shape of the lovers, the six of cups and agape. It's all love. If you love what you're doing, if you're kind to others, if you work well with others, it feels like a new opportunity could be opened up for you. The hard work will pay off. The only challenge that I see for some of you is you might be in a management heavy company. There's more people that are telling people what to do than the people that are doing the work. Um, so there could be a glass ceiling. But, you know, I feel like if you wanted to stay in this current position for another year, there's a lot that you could learn and then you can always go somewhere else in the long run. Uh, I think that what's missing for some of you is that feeling of being seen, feeling special, feeling inspired, maybe doing what really brings joy to you. And, and what I would say for those of you that want to look at the long term, the horizon, 
you could keep this and the entrepreneurial energy is saying you could also start something on the side and watch it start to grow. That makes the day job a lot more palatable. We don't always have to put all of our passion into work. For some of you, the passion is what you can do with the, the money that you get from that to help friends, help society, help a passion project, whatever. As long as you feel something in your life that brings passion this month, you're ahead of the game. And that's the main message I see for those that are working. Pretty stable overall. I will say we don't have tower energy here. So it's just about managing stress or boredom <laughs> for some of you, okay? And yeah, there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen, a lot of bosses trying not to get stressed out, trying to find a way to find a common ground between all of those different opinions, okay? Let's now shift the focus from those that have a job to those that are seeking employment. It's a good month, I can tell you that much, because all of these cards of attraction are here, lovers, six of cups, and agape. And this one is gonna be the biggest and most important thing. People wanna know what makes you excited, what brings passion into your life, and you don't need to come on too strong this month when it comes to interviews. So let's assume that those of you that are job seeking have a couple of interviews lined up. Just show up with that sense of, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. I've done my homework. I'm just going to try to have a conversation like, like we are here and be the best version of myself. And they'll either like it or they won't. Because if you get into that place where it's that you don't need it or want it too much, but, you, but you're definitely invested in it, that's like the perfect mix in an interview because they'll get a sense of this person might find something better. We better, you know, we better move on this. Um, I do feel like an offer can be put on the table here. Don't freak out if it takes a couple days longer here. The main thing here is don't push the decision. Um, that's the challenge. I see a couple of options on the horizon here for you. It feels like using your network to find them is key. Um, one of them does pay better, but when we're looking at the environment here, there could be a higher stress associated with that. I see another one where the pay may not be there, but the title is, and you might like it better. So there might be a little bit of a choice here. And I do think you can't underestimate or undervalue the importance of good work morale and um, culture and, and co-working environment. So if you like the people and you like the company and you think there may be room in the future to make up that gap in pay, it may be worth it. But that's what I see. One that's higher paying, but also a lot more stress. One that has the title that you want, but maybe not the pay that you want, but it looks like it has a lot of other things. For those of you that feel a little bit stuck right now, you may actually be thinking about going back to school. I fully support that. I know that not everyone has the finances to do that, but if you do, the teaching card represents a chance to go back to school. For some of you, this could also be a chance for you to teach or maybe get the certification that you need to train. It doesn't have to be in a traditional like tenured position or anything like that. This could also be deciding uh, to basically create a curriculum of some sort because I got so much entrepreneurial energy, including the sun card beneath it. Um, this could be you deciding to use the internet to basically create some sort of a curriculum with a library, with some videos, with some training, and leverage that in a way that you couldn't in a traditional school. So I, I see a lot of opportunities there for teaching, mentorship, training, and, um, and things of that nature. Even if you wanted to get an internship somewhere too and learn something new, this is a chance to do that. Okay, uh, moving from those that are job seeking now to those that are uh, students, here's what I see for you. I mentioned internships, absolutely this is a time to look at that. Um, it looks like you're doing pretty well, I have to say, with the Nine of Wands and the Six of Cups. I mentioned this for the last sign that I read for, but please take a moment to enjoy all the student life opportunities in front of you. Um, so, yes, please, please go to dances, please connect with others, join clubs, do all of that stuff because it is part of the big picture. Those friendships and alliances make a difference in the long run. Some of you may be taking an interest in teaching in the long run as well, and this is just validation on that. Um, take care of yourself. Don't stress out. It does feel like you are, you're basically set up for success this month. If you feel this, that's more of an important thing to look at. I mean, I think this is true of everyone, but especially students, because this is your chance to make a change. Better now than 5, 10, or 20 years from now, you realizing, I wish I would have changed it. So if you're a few semesters in, a few years in, you're thinking, I need to shore up this major and, and maybe do this instead or whatever, you have my support on that. Um, but generally speaking, just some stress release 
and relief and connecting with others this month is good and it does feel like you're doing well in what you're doing um but but just there's a lot going on here so there needs to be some um some channeling uh, not channeling so much but some a place for you to put that energy and again it could be exercise clubs or even counseling if you need it okay retirees first of all it's a really social month if you're a retiree because um, what i see here with this could be new love interests connecting with old friends and colleagues um, also just you feeling really happy at where you're at in your life sleep is interesting here some of you because of the lack of traditional schedule you may find yourself like up at all hours of the night or your clock is off so this is a chance to create a sort of structure in your life that's something i've been doing this for a long time now because i quit my job in 2015 but uh, i have a production schedule i have certain times that i need to start and stop things and i know what i'm going to do in any given day i've got this to do i've got this to do we're good so I had to become my own boss. It took me a while, but then I got really good at it. So create a schedule that works for you and stick to it. Uh, what do I, again, the main thing that I'm seeing here is a chance for new love, new friendship, and it feels like you're doing a good job with managing your money. So just keep up what you're doing, okay? Let's move on to love. We have the beautiful energy of the heart coming through in love. It came through reverse, and it's basically the universe saying, it's okay to be in the energy of receiving. Maybe you're not used to the spotlight shining on you, but lo and behold, this, the world basically wants to give you a little bit more this month, if you're ready to receive. So your mantra, should you choose to uh, adopt this, is I'm ready to receive love and abundance in the highest forms. Not only that, you want to really practice good self-love, so um, just that you love and respect yourself. Put those energies out there, and then we can connect with all that we see in the spread here, which is... There's a lot to love, basically. We're gonna break this down into three categories. Those in a relationship, seeking love, single and happy. If you're currently in a relationship, I love the friendship and camaraderie. I also love the fact that it feels like both of you are there for each other. There's a lot going on. Um, there may be a little bit of distance, particularly when it comes to intimacy, and it feels like it's more of a stress thing because these cards invariably show a lot of passion and a lot of connection. And it looks like what's tempering that is stress, uh, maybe a lack of balance in your life. And, but this, this kind of puts the two of you at odds if you're not getting the connection that you need or your partner isn't getting what they need from you. So open lines of communication. As I look at all the cards in front of me, I don't see any swords, right? So we're lacking communication, but there's a lot to love. And I like the kind of energy that I see here. So just spend some time with them. Intimacy isn't just physical touch. It's also getting to know what's going on in your partner's mind and in their life. So I feel like just, you know, a, a nice walk, a talk, um, you know, dinner at home, you can cook it for each other and just spend some time with each other. That's going to be really important in forging that trust and, and that other level of intimacy, which is just the intertwining of your two lives, right? Um, and then I feel like this will naturally happen when it's supposed to, the physical intimacy, if it's lacking. Again, for some of you, there could just be too much stress going on in your life. And so it's how can I be there for you to help you navigate the stress? Patience is going to be one of the other challenges, even in good, solid, communicative relationships. This card was reversed. So there may be something that your partner does that just um, has gotten under your skin a little bit. And ultimately, one thing to avoid is going into the energy of nagging or pushing the partner to do something. It could just be as simple as running an errand or have you done this? And basically what you want to avoid is getting too much in a parental role with, with your partner uh, or into a boss mode. So uh, if you can avoid that, it's ideal. Really just being there for each other is going to be key. And spending some time with your family, with your friends, with each other. Um, rekindling the flame in that natural way is going to be key, okay? Fairly manageable overall. Uh, it does feel like children could be entering into the mix, by the way, for some of you, and that's why there could be some sleepless nights, new child or new children, especially with the hidden sun that we got here as well. So it uh, could be a surprise, but it does feel like it's something that you can manage. All right, focusing on those that are seeking love. Everything that I was talking about earlier definitely connects here. As much as you're wishing for someone, they may be wishing for you. We see the form of this partnership here. It could be, and you have a couple options, by the way. Um, this could represent like you and them. Um, and so we have this grounded energy and this passion and this sort of innovation. 
what I am sensing in a new relationship could also be someone that needs to see everything spelled out and then someone that's really kind of more, their head's in the clouds, they're more imaginative and they're like, just trust me. So there could be a little friction there. Uh, what I see right now for many of you though is there's an opportunity to kind of clear out some things at work or in your own sort of life. Whatever's causing some stress, get that out of the way so that you can focus more on this. Please, please, please though, if you don't feel the chemistry, especially at the very beginning, if it's not there from day one, it's, there's nothing to rekindle because it didn't exist. It's very different from a relationship where it might have fizzled a bit, but if you didn't have it from day one, just do yourself a favor and focus on other things. You don't want, you owe it to yourself and to the other person to feel that mutual spark and to honor it if they don't feel the spark either. Um, but I see earth and uh, fire coming through for you this month and uh, attraction and it also past life connection. It should feel easy. It should feel like a no brainer when the two of you connect. Okay. So yeah, great chance to find love. Don't force the connection and um, try to free up your time a little bit too so that you can see all of these opportunities. Get out there, mix and mingle. Say yes to invitations. Go to, uh, if you are working, make sure that you go to professional mixers and events because there's lots of places you could meet people this month. It's a great time to meet. Um, and it's worth the wait. That's the last thing that I wanna say if you're single and looking, okay? Focusing now on those that are uh, single and happy. For you, uh, there's really just personal development coming through the roof here with the Agape card. You're really getting a sense of who you are and loving just being where you're at. So this is truly single and happy because this card doesn't need anybody to complete their sense of self. You are complete in and of yourself. Uh, what can you focus on this month? Well, things are looking good with finances. Um, really good when it comes to just being a leader in, in life. Again, for some of you, that could mean mentoring others. It could be this entrepreneurial sort of vibe that I was picking up on. And mostly like it's just lots of people coming in and out of your lives this month. So take time to get to know new people and to expand your social spheres. You'll be glad that you did. You may meet a fellow unicorn as well, even if you're single and happy. This could be a new best friend as well. Let's take a look now at the destiny card. We have blessings in abundance. Uh, there's a common theme this month. Really, there are a lot of opportunities and abundance is not just cash, folks. It also is friendships. It's also personal growth. It's also the ability just to see things starting to move in the right direction. And we have this angelic force coming through, pushing and opening and creating new paths in front of you. So are you open to receive? Um, these are very different decks, but you'll notice a very similar energy. And it is around the heart space, right? And this one in relationships, this is where some of the healing can be done. Um, but unconditional love and support is key. Look at all the hands coming through this month too, by the way, as I'm kind of reviewing the cards here. Hands outstretched, reaching out, offering new things. There's a lot of movement and there's a lot of movement because of the people that you've been fortunate enough to either already have met or you're just about to meet. This card is just reminding you of the power of being open to receiving that and receiving help and just saying thank you, especially if you're someone who sometimes finds that it's just hard to ask for help or to receive a compliment, just be in that energy of receiving. One more thing uh, that is kind of in the energy of this card too is to practice gratitude on a daily basis for all things that have happened, including the challenges. Thanks for bringing me that teaching lesson. Even if it did come through a painful experience, I no longer need it. I offer that back up to the universe with gratitude and I'm ready now to receive something that is brighter and lighter energetically. And that shows the universe that you're open, that you've learned. And again, the receptiveness now, you're stating what you want to receive, just not anything whatsoever. You're saying, I'm ready to receive something lighter, brighter, and more aligned to the lessons that I've learned. Love and abundance in the highest forms. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at sun rising and moon sign messages and see what else is coming through for all these facets of the, the sign of Scorpio. Sun rising and moon. Let's begin with the sun sign first. We have the king of cups. The king of cups is in reverse. This is saying for many of you, it's time to focus on the heart, matters of the heart. And if you've 
been putting yourself second, allowing everyone else in your life to receive first. This often happens when you are in a parental or a leadership role. Um, this month it's saying don't neglect yourself because everybody in your life that's depending on you is also depending upon your ability to sustain and to, to be there for them. And part of that in, involves health and happiness. So you owe it to yourself to make time for yourself. And whether or not you're ready, love and friendship and camaraderie is knocking on the door. There could be new love in the form of the King of Cups, which is my, one of my favorite partner cards because he's gentle, he's compassionate, he's kind, but he's also very strong. It's all of the divine masculine energies that you'd want because it's more approachable than some of the other uh, kings. So it could just be a really kind energy coming forth. Be kind to yourself, speaking of that. This is highly sensitive and highly receptive. Um, so you're picking up on a lot. You may be picking up on other people's emotions or stress. You could have a lot of creative energy coming forth this month. You're just definitely in your feels. So as you're feeling all of this stuff, make sure that you're taking care of yourself and that you know when enough is enough. Okay, good card overall though. Moving on to rising sign, we have the 10 of pentacles. This is so nice, on, especially when we have the king of pentacles here. So, you know, you have, again, really, really good cards when it comes to money this month. If you need to negotiate, negotiate. Um, if you don't feel like you have enough on something, ask. You have a good chance of receiving. If something is low ball offer and, and you don't want it, keep looking around. It feels like you can achieve whatever it is that you seek. This is also a card that um, can constitute marriage, a contract being signed, and it's also about expanding your horizons when it comes to um, the people that you know and the opportunities around you. So more in the field of, of abundance. Again, abundance not just being cash or money, but also connections. All of that is coming through. And if you, um, this could also just be you finishing something really important, a big chapter in your life, okay? Let's move on from rising to moon. It's a moment of revelation, a moment of understanding, something the blindfolds are being taken off. So if you look really closely, you can see the blindfolds there. So this is a chance to release something that might have even been blindsiding you too. It could have been a person, could have been a thought process or a way of being. And basically you're letting that go and you're seeing something for what it is. And it's also thinking beyond previous sort of like, not blocks, there's a better word. It's like constraints. Um, mental blocks, but more sort of like you painted yourself in a corner and said, if I, this is all that I can do, or, or if that person doesn't do this, then I won't do this. Like putting too many demands or constraints. You're opening yourself up to not seeing so um, binary or black and white. Um, there's a lot of shades of gray and there's a lot of different opportunities that want to present themselves. So your eyes are wide open and you can't sort of close them after they've been open. Now you just get to decide what you want to do next. Okay, so it's an awakening for many of you, particularly moon sign. All right, now let's focus on your final question or final card here. Um, this is your chance to ask something that I haven't yet answered. It can be anything. So just quietly fix your mind on that question and let's see what the universe has to say. Gosh, so much love this month. I'm so happy for you uh, when all of these cards come through like this. The Ten of Cups in reverse is a reminder that things are still moving in the right direction. You may not see everything that you want in front of you, but ultimately this is a card of celebration. Um, again, it's worth the wait. We talked about that earlier. So if you're holding out and really keeping your mind on this unicorn, please, please continue to do that. Um, the reversal of this can also constitute pressure, pressure from your family um, and friends and closest sort of people that you care about. Obviously, it's harder to push back when it comes from that part of your life, but you know, you might need to have better boundaries this month in saying no or protecting your own needs. So by all means, do that if you need to, especially as we saw, I believe it was, uh, was it Sonia with the King of Cups in reverse, a lot of sensitive energy. So make sure that people know that uh, there are limits, there are boundaries. As a yes or no, this is yes, but don't force the connection. Be patient with yourself and be patient with others. And um, again, keep an open mind. And if you don't feel it from the onset, it might not be worth investing in someone or something. Really make sure that the heart 
is the compass that you're listening to and paying the most attention to this month, okay? So it's a yes, but you've got to really tune into the heart space. But ultimately, it represents a lot, of, a lot more to love this month. Ten of Cups, Lovers, Six of Cups, Agape. This is a good month for putting yourself out there, meeting new people, and yes, connecting in love and friendships. That's great. You know, I don't, I don't uh, purposely look for love, but when I see it, I say it. <laughs> All right, folks, I hope this helped. And uh, by the way, if you enjoyed this, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe. It's free. It helps me know that this made a difference. It helps other people find the videos. So those simple things can do quite a bit. You can also follow me on social media. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashball, on all major platforms. And uh, that way, if you, you know, miss a video here, you can always see a reminder elsewhere. You can also give back in the way of Super Stickers, Super Chat, and also memberships. If you want to, on a monthly basis or a one-time basis, just say thanks. By the way, it helps me. It helps me produce brand new things like a podcast and all of the videos that you see here. Um, so I appreciate you. And I'd like to end now with that gratitude. Thank you so much for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube, for allowing me to channel all of these messages and be um, basically a part of your month ahead. And uh, I hope to see you all very soon here. Again, check out my monthly, daily, and weekly readings. One last note, remember, I don't offer private readings, so if anybody does that, just block and report. But in the meantime, again, sending you love and light, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.